Hello friends growing watermelon if done rationally and on a scalable basis can be a good source of income. In a few words, most commercial watermelon growers start the crop from seeds, hybrids, in an indoor protected environment. As they wait for the young seedlings to grow and be ready for transplanting, they prepare the field. They till the land, they make the beds or furrows and they place a black plastic film through the rows. The black plastic film not only helps the soil become warmer but also controls weeds. They also design and place the drip irrigation system. When they are ready for transplanting, they make small holes in the plastic film, where they dig small holes and plant the seedlings. Fertilization, drip irrigation and weed management is applied in most cases. Thinning is also applied. Commercial watermelon growers remove the malformed or underdeveloped watermelons in order to encourage the plant to devote its resources in fewer but bigger and tastier fruits. Most commercial watermelon varieties can be harvested 78 to 90 days after transplanting. Harvesting can only be made through hand scissors or knives. After harvesting, watermelon growers plow and destroy the remaining of the crop. They may also rotate the crop, in order to control diseases or prevent soil from depleting. Watermelons are long period crops. For growing outdoors, they need on average 100 to 120 days from seeding to harvesting. However, if you are planning to grow watermelon from seed, there are some facts you need to know. First, watermelon seeds require at least 18 degrees Celsius, 65 degrees Fahrenheit, soil temperature in order to germinate. Second, it is important for the seed to have optimum moisture levels in order to sprout. Over-irrigation can be harmful. Some producers water thoroughly the soil a day before sowing and do not irrigate again, until it sprouts. However, this is not a good technique if the soil is too sandy and has difficulties in preserving enough available water. Watermelon seeds germinate easily in 6 to 10 days depending on the weather and soil conditions. In areas with a danger of frost, growers prefer to sow the seeds in seed beds under controlled conditions and then transplanting them into their final positions. They most commonly use turf as substrate for optimum aeration. Growing watermelons from non-grafted seedlings. Another commonly used method is growing watermelons from non-grafted plants. If we follow this method, it is crucial to choose carefully the variety of watermelon we are going to plant. If for example the fields in our area have problems with diseases, pests, lower or higher pH or salinity levels, then not all varieties can thrive. Some varieties are tolerant to some of those factors, while others are not. The most commonly used varieties are Charleston Grey, Crimson Sweet, Jubilee, all sweet, royal sweet, sangria, triploid seedless and black diamond types. Growing watermelons from grafted seedlings. Nowadays, most growers prefer to use grafted watermelon seedlings. Grafting is a commonly used technique by which we join together parts from two different plants, so that they will grow as a single plant. The upper part of the first plant is called cyan and grows on the root system of the second plant, which is called rootstock. Eventually, we have a plant that combines all the advantages of its different components. Some producers prefer to grow from seed both the rootstock plant and the cyan. Then, they perform the grafting by themselves, while others buy certified grafted seedlings from legitimate sellers. The most commonly used seedlings nowadays are watermelon cyans grafted on squash rootstocks. Watermelons thrive best in rich, slightly sandy soils with pH levels from 5, 8 to 6, 6. They do not like soggy soils. Heavy clay soils with poor drainage and aeration should be avoided. Watermelon farming requires extensive soil preparation before planting, in order to be profitable and lead to high yields. The basic soil preparation starts about 5 months before transplanting watermelon seedlings. Plowing improves soil aeration and drainage. At the same time, plowing removes rocks and other undesirable materials from the soil. 
Tillage comes right after plowing. Tillage tractors leave the soil free from weeds which can be harmful for the crop. One week before planting, many farmers apply a pre-planting fertilizer such as manure or synthetic commercial fertilizer, always after consulting a local licensed agronomist. Since watermelon plants need a lot of space to grow, farmers plant them at predefined distances. Consequently, there is no reason to apply the pre-planting fertilizer to the entire field. A good technique is to mark the areas you are going to plant and then apply the fertilizer towards the lines. The next and most important step, especially in countries with non-optimum soil temperature during the planting period, is the linear polyethylene coating. Many producers cover the rows with black or green infrared transmitting, IRT, or black plastic film. They use this technique in order to maintain the root zone temperature at optimum levels, greater than 18 degrees Celsius or 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and prevent weeds from growing. In many cases, the most suitable period to plant watermelons outdoors is during the second half of spring. At that time, the danger of frost has passed in most cases. One hectare equals two, 47 acres equals 10.000 square meters. The distances and the number of plants depend on the watermelon variety, environmental conditions and of course the desired watermelon size that is always dictated by the market. For example, if we plant more seedlings per hectare, we will harvest fruits of smaller sizes. A different pattern for smaller fruit varieties is 1, 5 meters, 5 feet, Following this pattern, we will approximately plant 11.000 plants per hectare. 1 hectare equals 2, 47 acres equals 10.000 square meters. Some watermelon producers prefer to prune their watermelons, while others claim that pruning delays the development and fruit set of the plant. Those who prune their plants, remove most of the peripheral veins of the plant early, during the first stages of development when it only has three to four veins. With this method, they force the plant to develop further through the main vein. They keep removing excess foliage that prevents proper aeration during the entire growing period. Thus, they protect the plant from humidity-favored infections like powdery mildew. Most watermelon varieties reach their full maturity and are ready to be harvested 78 to 90 days after transplanting. When they are ready for harvesting, in most cases we notice a yellow spot on their skin on the surface that is in touch with the soil. Furthermore, we can observe a dry tendril on the part at which the stem is linked to the vein. Due to the differentiations in pollination time, not all watermelons mature at the same time. Watermelons can be harvested only by hand. We must be cautious to cut and not pull the watermelon. Otherwise the fruits may crack open, and in this case they cannot be marketed. A good yield, after some years of experience is 50 to 80 tons per hectare. In commercial watermelon farms, we may expect to harvest one, five to two full-size watermelons per plant. Watermelons are then transferred to cool but not freezing storage areas with a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you have experience in growing watermelons?